Although some institutions, a city, a state, may have created reparations atonement programs like scholarships and housing vouchers for black people, few, if any, have specifically provided cash a check until now. In February, the Virginia Theological Seminary quietly began handing out cash payments to descendants of black Americans who were forced to work there during slavery and Jim Crow. They included gardeners, cooks, janitors, dishwashers, and laundry workers. The program is among the first of its kind. The payments this year are $2,100, and the money will come annually from a $1.7 million fund, which is set to grow at the rate of the seminary's endowment. The exact number of black workers from 1823 to 1951 is still unknown, but it is likely that it includes 300 people or so, according to the research staff at the seminary. 15 people have received payments so far, but the number could grow by the dozens as genealogists pour over records to find living descendants. Joining me now to discuss is the Associate for Multicultural Ministries and Programming and Historical Research for Reparations at Virginia Theological Seminary, Ebony Davis. Ebony, so what made you guys decide to pay reparations? <laughs> That's a, a, a lofty question, um, but it's our dean and president um, decided this a couple of years ago that it was time. Um, it fell in line with a long um, kind of history of uh, reparative work and um, reconciliation work that the seminary has been doing um, with its recognizing and confronting its history with slavery. And so this was the next step, and um, the dean announced it back in the fall of 2019. and. We pulled together a program and got researchers and have been kind of digging through records and so far have found quite a bit. And as you said, um, to date, 15 people from six different families have been paid um, reparations from the fund. And so how do you come up with $2,100? Well, so the fund is, a, yes, the endowment fund is $1.7 million. And so the yield from it it, we take the yield each year and divide it amongst the shareholders who are the descendants who um, are eligible for reparations given the criteria. And um, it's divided amongst and then you get the 2100. So every year that amount will change based off of the market and it will be more or less depending on the market. Um, and that's what each each shareholder will receive here, but, from here on out. But out. does it also mean that if but does it also mean that if dozens more people enter the pool, that it will shrink the, it'll divide it more ways and therefore it'll shrink the, the, the check? Is that, am I yes, it does. Yes, the, the fund is okay. growing as well, and the shareholders are growing too. The shareholders are growing faster because our research um, is, 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 is going really well. We're finding people, which is what we want. Um, but donations are pouring into the fund. Um, the, the institution is behind growing the fund. So we're hopeful that both will grow at the, you know, hopefully at the same rate. And at some point it will stabilize. And then that fund will just, the research will stabilize and the fund will continue to grow and grow. And the descendants and shareholders will be able to benefit from that from for years to come. So just as a moral and ethical consideration, what do you say to the people out there who say, oh, we cannot pay reparations as cash? Because that's what you're doing. But they say you have to direct it into opportunity zones and relief for this and tax breaks for that, rather than just cut the check. Well, I say who, we aren't the people who are able to decide that. Like, I can't, if I'm trying to fix or right a wrong, I can't tell you how you should, how your wrong should be righted. So we offer this cash payment. We, we know it's not a lot of money. We know it's not enough. We know it doesn't even begin to fix anything but it's a start um a big priority of the program also is building relationships with the local black community in alexandria and um so far we've been able to kind of start that process and so it's i would not feel comfortable telling someone hey we want to fix this so here's an education go better yourself there, there should be no strings attached and so that that's my stance on it that's the seminary stance on it that we want to just all offer this, extend our hand, and then move on for there. And of the people who have or are receiving these checks, you know, what has been the response to? 
Um, it's been great, uh, overwhelmingly great. Um, there's a lot of surprise, a, a lot of shock, a lot of shock, a lot of conversations. Like I never thought I would see this in my lifetime. I can't believe this. People didn't even know black people worked at the seminary today. So that you know that kind of tells you exactly what um, the the view of the seminary was for the black community in the area. But everybody's been re really receptive, and they're spreading the word. So people are calling me before I have a chance to call them and tell them that they're eligible. <laughs> and there's an excitement growing within the community, and it's organic. Um, so I'm excited about the way we'll be able to build relationships with the community moving forward. Ebony Davis, thank you for joining me. More power to you, and keep writing those checks. <laughs>